Doc Walker, host of the Burgundy and Gold post game show on 1067 The Fan. Hey, Doc. And the Team 980. He was uh, subbing for B. Mitch and Finley yesterday, along with Linnell Willingham here on The Fan. What's up, Doc? Good morning. Gentlemen, a misery Monday. This is getting to be too uh, frequent. I don't like the vibe we're putting out. <laughs> no, I don't like the FYI, either. it's this Tuesday. This is supposed to be fun. Yeah, terrible Tuesday. It's Tuesday, Doc. Doc. Yeah, well, it, I don't even know what day it is anymore. <laughs> right. This is ridiculous. <laughs> right. I was this is cu- supposed to be fun. <laughs> I was curious. I Before we get to the play on the field and the coaching yeah. and all that, I, I was intrigued by your comments about ownership. And uh, I, I might have the same opinion as you, Doc. I, I know this from an optics pers- perspective, and I can't blame them per se. They didn't know they were necessarily on camera, but it's 20 to 3, whatever it is, and we're getting smoked, and those guys are laughing, looking at their phones, and, you know, it's, it's their pro- prerogative. They own the team. They can do whatever they want. I just didn't love the look of it when we're getting smoked on national TV, and I think you might have some similar vibes. I'm not sure. Well, no, it ne- wasn't necessarily about – their demeanor, I, I look at this as that I don't they're not playing. What I'm looking at is that are you actively involved day to day? This is a week to week business. I'm trying to beat Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not throwing the, the season away. Mm-hmm. We've had two disastrous performances, which is not natural for pro football. You can lose a game, but you're not supposed to get slaughtered. And <laughs> right. so that emphasis means that you gotta let this program was run without ownership forever. Mm-hmm. You should not be in charge of anything you don't own. So I just said a presence of letting, in other words, are they meeting with Ron? I don't know what they're doing, but what I'm suggesting is that we can't wait until next year. So all the emphasis I'm making is that urgency because we proved against Philadelphia that we were competent. We can be competent. Right. Once you show me you can play, then I expect you to play like that more so than not. I don't like the Jekyll and Hyde stuff. That is not comforting. And, and Doc, it's it's really not a good look when one of the, the minority owners, Magic Johnson, comes out on his Twitter and blasts the team and says they, they were playing with no fire whatsoever. Like, that's that's not good for well, he's been through going it. forward. Mm-hmm. But, but, but he's been through it. Sure. So what he, that's the value of a Irvin Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. He's telling the fellas, hey, guys, I don't like this. Right. And so he was sitting there pissed off. You know, like most of us sitting there going, what? Are you kidding me? Right. Not that they that the Bears couldn't win. The Bears could have woulda, shoulda, coulda beaten Denver. They're capable, but to get beat up. My point is emphasis is that are you kidding me? It's too you we got tore up from the floor up. How about being competitive? How about coming when people question whether or not you're pumped up, that's gotta be held on somebody, and I say, hey. Just take over. I'm not changing anybody. What I'm emphasizing is that what approach are you taking? It could be behind the scenes. Maybe we don't know. But for goodness gracious, are you in to wait until 2024 to get your team motivated? I don't believe that. I, I'm not into that. I'm like week to week. I'm not throwing in a towel. I'm saying let's get excited about a chance to turn it around. Mm-hmm. That was my point. Mm-hmm. What do you make? Uh, 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 you know, you. I'm I'm irked by Ron's demeanor. Jason argues he's probably been this way his whole career. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I I, I just want to see more sense of urgency on the sideline. I see it from the enemy, but even like Jack, Jack looks so passive. Ron is so passive. I know Ron's whole. I think he thinks his only job on game day is to to work the officials. That's what I think. I don't know what else he does. Um. I don't know. You tell me what's your was perspective just saying, on that. I was saying, Doc, that he's Ron's been through a lot. I, I mean, over the Agreed. last four years with the cancer, yeah, with all the stuff off the field, he's probably just drained. And as you get older, you know this, Doc, you lose yeah. energy. Well, it looks like it. That I yeah. agree with that. I'm not saying that yeah. it hasn't happened. Yeah, it looks L- like it. Like I said, anybody that has overcome what he's overcome, it's a Herculean effort to get there. I'm not. I'm not blaming him. He shouldn't be in charge of that. That's my point. Are we going to just l- allow him to take the brunt of all of this on his own? It's not a sole proprietorship. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm saying. Somebody come up and say, okay, we're going to help you. I'm saying help. And that's by any means possible. Or you're going to just stand and sit there and wait. We're talking about stadium. I don't give a crap if they play in a parking lot. 
I need him to play better. Mm-hmm. That was my point. Love everything that's happening. Love the Brewskis. Love the enthusiasm. But on game day, I expect to win, not just participate. Right. What, so, do, you, what do you expect this week against the Atlanta Falcons, who, looked, who looked really good? Ritter looked really good. Um, threw for 329. Um, they're very good at home. I don't think Ritter's lost a home game. Hasn't lost a home game, I think, since high school. Yeah. Um, so, and, and you know, they did target Pitts and London a lot in this past game. I think 20 mm-hmm. total they're times. They're smart. Yep. They're yeah. smart. What do you th- expect? Yeah, they're smart. I wish I could tell you. Hmm. Again, this is what I don't like. We're up and down. That's not what I'm looking for. You're looking for con- – even if we lose, I want – the Philadelphia effort. And whether we call it moral or not, I would never do it, but I'll say this. I saw things, I go, okay, we can build on that. But when you're replacing players in a, in games and you're getting beat on basic things, they did not create something in the sand. Those are basic, stop and go. If we went out to the park and played flag, those kind of things would happen. So don't tell me that somebody's got to be coached up to that. Really? So at what point do you evaluate who you evaluate? You like to wait until the end of the season. But all I care about is how do we beat Atlanta? Or are we just tanking for Caleb? Is that it? Is this a a plot for a draft pick? I'm so confused based on the up and down. That's not That don't make sense. People that are trained well, that are properly prepared, do not react that way. Doc, in your opinion, what's the best way, at least for the Falcons game in the next few games, the best way to help Forbes regain his confidence? Like, do they have to start zoning up? Do they have to start helping him double whoever he's covering? Like, what do you think is (laughs) is the way out for Forbes at this point? Because he's clearly struggling. Whatever the plan was last week, can that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, can that. And then do whatever you got to do. Again, without any safety help. He's not big enough to put his hands on anybody. So it's pretty much judging, looking based on the bigger athletes he's going up against, that he's not going to be able to play one-on-one alone. So give him help. Or maybe occasionally the pass rush could bail him out. Mm. All the corners I've spoken with all say their best friend is pressure, is the pass rush. They had one or two players that were backups. That's unacceptable. You just don't take my word for it. Just turn on the TV and watch the badasses in this league. One of them played last night. He was a terror. Max Cross. One guy in the game. Yep. One guy. Mm-hmm. It was a terror. So all I'm saying is that figure it out. But my suggestion to the top was that they're crying out for help. They need some help. Could be a conversation. Could be a hug. But for God's sakes, I don't want the whole emphasis on stadium down the future. I got a game Sunday that I'm concerned about. Does anybody care about that? Mm -hmm. Talking to Doc Walker, and he mentioned uh, Max Crosby, who was all over the field yesterday. I think he had four tackles for loss. It's interesting, and I don't know how you feel about analytics. When you look at the defensive linemen and you look at some of these metrics, let's talk about Chase Young. He had 11 pressures in this game. Yep, he did. All right? But it's not adding up when you're giving up over 30 points a game. And you could do the same thing for each of these guys. You mm-hmm. know, Deron Payne, uh, Jonathan Allen, who we have on the show, is a really good guy. Like, individually, great interview you'll see yesterday. great analytics and numbers on Montez Sweat as well. And yet, they're giving up all these explosive plays. Why isn't it adding up? And that is the question that I posed publicly suggesting that our new friends go and find out. Because everybody needs to feel a little bit of heat unless you are the owner yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're an employee, you show up there and you flub up some spots, (laughs) you miss some breaks, I guarantee you that um, you're going to get a conversation Mm -hmm. because you're being managed. Everybody talking about when we're going to get a new studio. We're talking about performance within the shifts. That's all I'm saying. Structurally, no one should feel like they have no balls. They don't have to answer to anybody. Are you kidding me? 
All right, what about Chase? Let's go specifically. We were talking about this yesterday. So, numbers-wise, he's pressuring the quarterback amongst the best in the NFL in some of the analytics. Um, It's got three sacks, but they are giving up a ton of points. He's going to want a lot of money. So is Montez Sweat. They've already given a lot of money to Deron Payne and to Jonathan Allen. What do you do with Chase? Does Doc Walker re-sign Chase Young? Okay, let me give you real talk. I don't judge Chase like everyone else judges Chase because I know what it's like to come back from an injury. His motor, his game is coming. He's actually getting better. Mm -hmm. What I need him to do, and I can't change that because of the significance of his injury and how much time he was out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's positive. But if you don't win, winning is getting to the quarterback. He's got to win. Winning is keeping contained. There's a number of things other than his effort. I ain't. That's not the concern. Here's the deal. If John gets double, then Payne's got to win. Mm-hmm. Sweat's got to win. You're getting the benefit of having somebody be a, enough of a badass that they are doubled. That means the offense is saying, okay, we can't block this guy one-on-one. So what you're telling me is that if I got three ones, single block, two backups playing, And that's all I won? That's Mm -hmm. unacceptable. My point is that we got to raise the the tempo. We got to turn up the fire because we have to win more one on ones if you're one on one, if you're a bag man. If you're not a bag man, then I ain't mad at you. (laughs) Yeah, but maybe, maybe, listen, as great as those guys are, and I think they all have their moments and they're all at times show their greatness. But the the other side has first round picks too. You know, and a lot of times I just think they're outnumbered. And we just think we can win with these front four. And I just think it's just a numbers game, Doc, as great as they are. I don't, I, for some reason, Jack thinks it's good enough to just rush these four 98% of the time. Okay, don't you agree with me that if, it, if there's a question, yeah. someone should be over there asking these questions and getting answers that they're satisfied with? Well, I, I so who's that's, that someone? Well, it should be Ron, right? Well, no, I'm not. Ron doesn't own the team. Yeah, that's my whole point. New guys, you, you guys got. are letting employees run your franchise. I don't get that. Yeah, I do not understand. People have to be under the stress of realizing that someone is monitoring everything. Well, I'd love. Yeah, I agree with that. We're not waiting until next. Well, no, let me say it. You guys do whatever you. Have. I'm not waiting until next year. Right. I need results in Atlanta. I still feel like I got a chance to compete in this. Or if not, then just tell me you're tanking. You cannot have the Buffalo performance and that crap against the Bears and tell me that things are okay. I'm not living that way. What are you going to do, Doc? If they co- the, There's two scenarios. I mean, there's a lot of different ways. To put, but if they come out and they play great against the Falcons and they seem to rebound... That's still kind of annoying because you're wondering why they didn't do it the week before. Yeah, but I'll take it. I'll take because it. Because I'm still trying to I'm trying to get to the playoffs. See, you're still in the race. As bad as it is for the week, I look at the big picture and go, okay, we got to do this or that, but then you got a chance. What is the plan? Mm-hmm. We're focusing on the wrong – again, everybody, do it your way. Everybody has a way mm-hmm. to, fit, you know, to fit, fit their own whatever it is in you. To me, nothing matters other than not getting my ass kicked on national TV in front of a packed house. That's not natural Hmm. to not have a sense of your hair should be on fire. You've been playing in front of an empty building. Not a place is packed, and that's it? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. All right, but what if, so let's say, what if a disaster hits and they have another dud? Then what do you do? Well, that's what we're all going to be waiting. What I'm encouraging is that people get on notice and go, somebody has got to do or say something other than the norm because the norm's not cutting it. Mm-hmm. It's not cutting it. I mean, I don't like a lot of things, but that, that, it's not my department. I'm looking on the field. Guys in a uniform I don't recognize. I don't like that. We have a tradition. We have a, we have a lot of things that are being taken for granted. And I'm saying, personally speaking for myself, a guy has been through that, it's unacceptable. We're not an expansion team. 
And, Doc, I, I feel like the, the schedule is really at a tipping point. I know you're focused on the Atlanta game, just one game at a time, but four of the next five are on the road, mm. and the one home game in that span is home to the Eagles. And before the Bears game, I felt like I had the luxury of, well, they get to play <laughs> the Giants on the road and the Patriots on the road. Those teams are bad. Like, I can't do that anymore after the Bears performance. Right, because you, you don't know, know what, what I mean? to expect. Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't just say, we're better than... X, Y, and Z team. Oh, we like, can't that's say that anymore. Now. That's yeah. gone. Yeah, you're right. But but it, but you're not out of it. That's my point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't expect people to understand. But what I'm doing, part of the reason I hope I'm on, is to give you some insight from having been in the same environment. We've lost five in a row. I know what it's like. We've been there. You don't talk your way out of changing it. It's doing days off. It's doing whatever it takes. Or are you just going to accept it? Uh, or is this just it? Mm-hmm. Is this just who we're going to? I don't do that. I don't I don't believe in that. I don't give a damn about next year. I don't care where they play. We play in a parking lot. But I got to play better than we're playing. And somebody's got to be held responsible for when it doesn't work. Well, I think you're going to see that at the end of the year. It's too late. Well, I can't. I can't. I, 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 I ain't doing that. Point. I, I know, but you're not doing that. I know that but, is but, a giving them a pass. But like you said, Doc, you still have a shot. You can't right. start making major changes now. When I'm still not saying making shot. changes. People keep putting that. I've not said change anybody. What I've said is get people to do their jobs. Well, we'll see if that works this week. Yeah, get them to do their job. That's all I'm saying. What is so foreign about that? <laughs> They're requesting that everybody. Nobody showed up Monday to the pay window late, did they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so all I'm asking is that. I don't mind paying you. I don't mind none of that. But what do I get out of it? Doc, thank you as always. We've got to run. We're up against it. That's oh, yeah, Scott this was Walker, fun. All right, the thank Burning you, Doc. Gold. Appreciate it. Post-game show on 106.7 The Fan and the Team 980.